Namaste. Welcome to the second session of this course. You might remember the first session we talked about how the, our professional context is evolving and how we need a very different sets of the competencies. We also talked about the criticality of self-management in attaining success and retaining success in our life and in our career. We looked at well-being as sign of management of self and management of career and we also reflected on how Indian data particularly the youth data suggest about the state of well-being and state of flourishing in India. In this course, we are going to look at why positive psychology and yoga have to be part of this course. To understand this, we need to understand how evolution, human evolution takes place and we are mostly talking about the psychological evolution. Human evolution is a result of uh, some adaptive behaviors. These adaptive behaviors were developed, were demonstrated, they became like pattern by avoiding harm and injuries or rather we can say these are the result of avoiding harms and injuries and also result of seeking optimal experience positive experience, creative experiences of life. So, both of these types of uh, uh, stimulants we can say or those both of these types of tendencies have resulted into human evolution. We have to develop some uh, mechanism which were actually result of our tendency, our need to avoid harm and injuries. For example, as human beings are and were evolving, they were facing many challenges coming from the natural environment, from the uh, animals or from fellow human beings who might be competing for the resources. So, as a result of constantly living in testing environment, they naturally develop the uh, tendency of suspicion, tendency of holding things tendency of developing some attachment, then only they could fight for those resources which they were holding. So, all these things were result of avoiding harms. Functional distress mechanism also developed in this process to check the uh, uh, infidelity of the partner, to look at some cunning part, uh, cunning members in the community who might steal the resources which uh, one human being one family has adopted, has acquired. So, as a result of that, functional distress mechanism naturally developed. Lot of competitive, uh, lot of games were actually very ruthless competition. They were zero sum game. Only one person could win. It is very different from win-win kind of games we see particularly in the corporate world. The whole business world rather is actually based on the notion of win-win. Someone gets money, someone gets a good. That is an exchange process. That is a that is supposed to be and that was designed to be a win-win process. There were not many win-win uh, games as human beings were evolving, as we can see caveman was evolving. So, as a result of that, tendency for anger, competition, uh, again the allurement, manipulation, all these things had to be naturally developed. So, we have developed these tendencies as we have evolved. David Buss, uh, I have primarily taken uh, these insights from the uh, work of David Buss. Uh, the reference is given in this uh, slide. We are not only though have evolved through avoiding harm and injuries. We have also evolved by seeking optimal experiences of being alive, being connected and being creative. These tendencies are very well captured in the De, uh, Ryan and Dacey's work on self-determination theory. What self-determination theory says is 
that human beings have tendency or urge natural urge to look for building competence. And you can see human beings as they have evolved not only have defended themselves, not only they have survived the competition, they have built very different type of competencies. Starting from use of the fire, use of the very uh, rudimentary instruments, making the shades, making shelters, developing the process of agriculture, all these are at one level are result of tendency of human being to develop competency. They also have tendency for belonging, that is how the families were born. Initially families were developed as biological units, but later on families became social unit and many social units started becoming communities. So, the need for belongingness resulted into the formation of the communities, establishing of the villages, building of the states, all that happened because of this need for belongingness. Human beings also have tendency and urge to exercise autonomy, to experience autonomy. The science for large part of it was aiming at winning over nature. This is this tendency is a reflection of seeking autonomy and as a result of that they challenge the most difficult environment, they challenge the most difficult challenges and they develop using competencies they started the uh, human beings want to have more and more autonomy on whatever and whatever they wish to carry out. So, our evolution is result of avoiding harm as well as seeking positive experiences. Naturally, any science or any field of study which is aiming at studying human mind will naturally look at uh, the behaviors and tendencies resulting from these two uh, natural urges or natural evolutionary needs. So, psychology is not different from that. Inherently, the uh, three mission of psychology as defined by the, uh, the founders William James, Wundt or Freud, uh, generally the mission of psychology was to be understood and William James who is the father of functionalist uh, school of psychology articulated it very emphatically. It says that mission of psychology is curing mental illness making the lives of all people more fulfilling and identifying and nurturing talent. You can look at uh, in these missions, we have captured both the types of evolutionary tendencies. We have captured the tendencies which have resulted into the human personality and human functioning by the process of avoiding harms and we also look at. Uh, elements which are result of natural tendency of human being to seek belongingness, developing competency and acquiring autonomy. As field of psychology has grown and uh, Seligman in his uh, landmark paper on American psychologist which, uh, which he has written uh, co which is co-authored with Chick and Mihai, they have explained this process that in the at the time of and after second world war some major changes took place. Large number of war veterans were coming back after the war, during the war and there was a need for their psychological rehabilitation. Naturally they have seen violence, they were part of the massive violence, many many shocking traumatic experiences and that resulted into many psychological ailments. That was the need of that time to focus on the ailments, on the problems and that was observed by psychologists of that time and they also found that by studying ailments they can get research support grants. Because of this need, a massive effort was directed amongst the psychologists to underwell the different types of ailments and also developing ways of dealing with those and 
they were very successful. We have a massive data and massive documentation of the mental disorders and their symptoms as well as how they can be treated. But later on it was realized that treatment of illness is not equivalent to preventing that, that is number one. Secondly, treatment of illness and nurturing talent which is mission of the psychology or making the lives more fulfilling which is another mission of psychology that these, 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 these things are not equivalent. Treating ailment, ailment is different, helping people to live more fulfilling life and developing their talents are different. In the next session, we will also look at in the form of a picture that positive psychology is not uh, dealing with the ailment, it is actually above the zero line. So, normal situation is if we consider that as zero line, above the zero line is where positive psychology belongs. But a uh, large part of the evolution since 1940s of the field happened on below the line phenomena, which are mainly related to mental disorder and ailments. This thing was pointed out by Martin uh, Seligman in his presidential speech in the American Psychological Association and uh, he and his team called for diverting the attention of the field towards possibilities, towards the greater competencies towards those aspect of life which make life worth living. And that was the call which was the result of recognizing that treating ailment and achieving great life and realizing our humanity, realizing the essence of the humanness in our life, these are two different things.